Dear friends, welcome to Theosophical Insights, the podcast project of the World Federation of Young Theosophists. Today, we are happy to give you another episode. We're interviewing Pavel Malakov. Pavel Malakov studies theosophy since 2001, and since 2012, he is a member of the Theosophical Society. He was presidential representative for Russia in 2013 to 2016. He is president of Light of Truth branch in Kemerovo City, Western Siberia, founder and editor of Theopedia, online theosophical encyclopedia, editor of Colloquial Publishing House and Modern Theosophical Thought Magazine. Among the notable ongoing projects he runs are Reading the Sacred Doctrine, online weekly webinar since 2014, H.P. Blavatsky's Scrapbooks in English and Russian, online publication of the scrapbooks from the TS archives in English and Russian, Theosophy Wiki, administrator of the Russian section, William Kwan Judge collected writings in Russian, compiler and editor from the caves and wilds of Hindustan, Letters to the Motherland in English and Russian, editor, sources of the gems from the East and their translation into Russian, New edition of the Secret Doctrine in Russian with a lot of links and additional information, checking and correcting the Russian text of the Secret Doctrine. Pavel is a national lecturer and author of more than 50 articles. And we're very happy to welcome you today. And let's begin our interview. Thank you. So, yes. yeah, we're very happy and honored to have you with us today. Um, our first question is, how did you come in contact with Theosophy and the TS? Mm -hmm. Well, my way started uh, in my student age. I was uh, I was an ATM engineer in, in bank at my last grade at university. And... Uh, I was supposed to uh, make ATMs work on our region. So that's why we traveled a lot in uh, nearest cities. And I was the one who was uh, running those ATMs. So during this uh, traveling, I was uh, together with a driver. And driver happens to be a theosophist. He wasn't in uh, TS because uh, there were no TS in Russia, well, at least in my, in my city. Uh, but he was studying uh, sacred doctrine and theosophical books. And uh, little by little, he uh, was uh, introducing me the teaching, was uh, answering my questions. That was the time I was starting to think about how the world is, what is the meaning of living, uh, what is the what life means and so on these philosophical questions arose in my mind at that time so uh, during our long trips uh, we were discussing this and he was introducing me step by step the main uh, doctrines of uh, theosophy and after that i was interested how many people uh, studying theosophy in my city and I asked him, he introduced me a group of theosophists in our city. I came to the meeting uh, and since then I was uh, coming periodically to this, to those meetings and um, listening for several years. I was listening to lectures, I was asking questions. And uh, at this time, at that, at that time, there were no tears. Uh, the leader of our group in, in my city, in Kemerova, uh, he wished to become a TS member. Uh, and since we didn't have a representative, uh, uh, any representative in our country, we uh, talked to Ukrainian theosophists. And through the Ukrainian theosophists, we, uh, in several groups, joined the Theosophical Society. It started in nine, 2009. And since then, uh, Theosophists in our city be, uh, started to join the Theosophical Society. And I was among the first of those Theosophists who became TS members. So that's my story. You have been 
engaged with theosophy for many years. How would you say it has changed you over the course of, of years? Dramatically, I would say completely. Because uh, uh, as a Soviet Union child, I was raised in a atheistic, atheistic uh, society. And I didn't believe in anything outside our physical world. That was my attitude by birth. I didn't think about it. I was. It was a tradition where I was uh, where I was born and what I got from my parents from the environment I was in. In the last grade of uh, university, I started to question, and I was I wasn't satisfied by the materialistic view. I wasn't satisfied by religion uh, answers to the questions I had. So uh, the destiny gave me this opportunity to talk to this uh, driver. And uh, I got the answers that were completely different from what I knew before. And uh, with uh, his help, I was I started to read Secret Doctrine. And this book amused me and amazed me and took all my thoughts, even though it took me very long to, to proceed. It, it took me about a year and a half to read, to just read the first volume and another year to read another second volume. Uh, but since then, I read Secret Doctrine several times, in, mostly in Russian, but in English as well in different editions and in different translations and i conduct the theosophical uh, webinar secret studying secret doctrine and today i mentioned that it is a anniversary so t today was the 470th uh, meeting wow it was since one, 29 uh, since 2009 no, no, we started in uh, 2014 and uh, in August. And so today is uh, 10 years uh, of this project. And sometimes there were only two people, me and another one, who were uh, reading the book and discussing the problems. But uh, for now, uh, for several years, it's about 15, 20, and a little bit more. Uh, participants every time every uh, Sunday come to discuss questions there are many active people who uh, the with us and ask their questions and for me it's uh, kind of the life kind of life that makes it worth to live I would say so philosophy mm -hmm. changed my world changed my view and uh, actually made me as a person, as a thinker, as a uh, conscious human or conscious being, not just living in the environment, but the one who think about and make the environment useful for us to live. I would say this. Wow, that's very inspiring. Um, you uh, went from being atheist to reading Secret Doctrine. That's a huge um, I would say, um, to me, The Secret Doctrine is a very um, daunting book. It seems like it's very difficult to read. So how did you um, think about how did it all make sense to you back then? And uh, what, what was one um, spiritual truth that um, yeah. maybe made it click in you or spoke to you the most? <laughs> Yes, uh, 10 years, it's a webinar. It's, uh, it's a public reading of this book. And I met this book in uh, first year of this uh, century. So to uh, 2001, that's when I met it for the first time. And I was reading as all, all the other, all the rest uh, at home, at, on my own, trying to figure out what, what those words mean. But mm -hmm. in the group, it, it made the progress much better. So I found that uh, group reading is more profound, more, more productive. And after several years of reading in groups, when the internet was uh, spreading 
in our country and uh, it 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 came to every home in every house so we could do it this uh, in in a distance so we can do it remotely and that's about uh, uh, 2009 when we came to the point where we can gather together in the cyberspace and discuss and read together so yes it is difficult the book is difficult and uh, I think it is the purpose of this book. It's not an easy reading book. This is the book which makes us think about the world, about what it says. Uh, in on my opinion, Secret Doctrine is a, uh, one of those books which train our mentality, our way of thinking. It's not just to memorize some facts there. It's not just the history of human beings or our planet or cosmos. The way it, it's uh, written reminds me the gym. In gym, we put uh, stress on our muscles to get it stronger. In Reading Secret Doctrine, we put stress on our mental body and make our thinker to grow, to become stronger. So that's why people who are uh, really involved in Secret Doctrine, they read it more and more, again and again, from different parts, from diff combined different fragments, from uh, reading with other people, because any this uh, kind of reading, kind of discussion, together with somebody new, it's always something new you discover. Even though if you're reading it on your own, you discover every time something new. But if you read this book with somebody else, with different point of view, with different kind of mentality, with a different background, philosophical background, philosophical background, uh, cultural background, you get another point of view from him or her. You just get another uh, view. And that's how we spread our consciousness. That's how we wider think, uh, think wider. That corresponds to my experience as well. Thank you. And you mentioned that you were reading, as everyone else, The Secret Doctrine alone at home, the first years before joining a group. Um, can you maybe add a little bit about this experience, about this period of life? Maybe you read some other theosophical books. Well, how was that experience before you joined the TS or before you even found any group? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, as for Russia, we... <laughs> Uh, have uh, another teaching here, very uh, widely spread among Russian thinkers, uh, called Agni Yoga, or uh, Living Ethics. And uh, there are many spiritual books in this teaching. So uh, when, when I was mature enough to start to ask questions, I met this theosophist as I mentioned, the driver. Uh, but he said that uh, he showed me the secret doctrine. We discussed some passages in this book. But he uh, warned me that the book is difficult. So you need to read something else to, to, to find some answers, to compare what you have. And I was reading uh, some books from this uh, Living Ethics. And of course, uh, other work, other works of HBB, and there were key to theosophy, and all the articles we have. Uh, most of her articles translated, even several times in Russian. So there are plenty of literature. And when the Soviet Union crashed and uh, the uh, borders were crossed, even in intellectual borders. So we had a lot of literature came to our view. And among on, on those waves of literature, there were many theosophical literature. And Secret Doctrine, for example, was published several times, in, even in 1991, when the, the Soviet Union crashed. It was several issues of this book. And all the uh, HPV works came with different translations, different uh, independent publishing houses translated her and published it. So there are a lot of uh, theosophical books uh, in Russian for now. And 
in these 19 uh, years, there were a lot of. So I read mostly at that time all of HPB that was translated. Yeah. Right. Thank you. And I see that in Theopedia, the Theosophical Encyclopedia that you founded uh, online, and it gives people access to these monumental works by HPB um, in such an organized format. So what does this project mean to you? And what has mm -hmm. the process of creating this been like? Yes, this project was uh, part of my study actually as most people at the time i was when i was reading the book i, I uh, had to memorize all the other things i read about the particular subject and i couldn't get it everything in my mind compiled at the at the moment so i need to mark on the margins which term here is explained which uh, topic is covered uh, what category of uh, terms uh, here used, and so on. So margins of my books were were covered with my handwriting. And after some period, I understood that this is not productive because you still have to memorize where you put those marks. I was uh, then I became to another way of study. I got some notebook uh, some copy books and was writing quotes or themes topics and put book and page where i can uh, discover this or work on this topic after some period i understood that this is not productive as well because uh, you still have to uh, look through all these sheets of papers and there were a lot of copy books beside me then uh, I was, uh, well, uh, my education background is a, a mathematician with computer science. So I have uh, some knowledge how to program. And I started to look at this way. I wanted to put all the text in the uh, computer. That's how I came to the idea to uh, make a program or find just I would like I was uh, looking for the program which could combine all the text with hyperlinks to each other with the uh, ability to make uh, topics somehow highlighted uh, to put uh, to link between different pages between different uh, books on on the topic I research at the moment I couldn't find the program so I wrote it I I took uh, similar uh, open software, uh, got idea with how it works, took it from the the part I needed, reworked it, and uh, made a program of my own. But it wasn't too productive for me as well because you have to you have a lot of work to do with the programming, but uh, a, a little work with the teaching, and so. After that, and it was a local problem. It's on your computer, and if you want to communicate with somebody else on another computer, you have to share this program with him or her and uh, somehow to explain how it works. After that, I came to the idea to put it on in internet. So all the quotes that I gathered of HPB, there were several hundred quotes already, or 700 topics of the quotes of HPB that I gathered at the time, I put it in inter I put it in internet. After that, I came to the idea that it wasn't productive as well, because uh, many people would like to share their experience with the text. So I came to the idea that I need a, a, a new engine uh, accessible to everybody and to uh, to have some roles in this engine, which could be administrative, editor reader on other roles of the participant of the project. So I, I was looking for the project that for the software which could do this for me. And I came to the Wikipedia and found that uh, it is uh, open software and Wikipedia is a dictionary, online dictionary, 
and the software that they use and program the software is a freeware as well. So I took this, uh, it, it's called MediaWiki. So I took this software, MediaWiki, and uh, uh, put, uh, well, I put all the information I had to this engine. And that's how actual Chatpedia arose. After that, I understood that it is not very productive. I need to do this project international. So I put, I figure out how to make this project in, on the different languages, restructured all the engine, uh, configured it, and now it is a multi-language. And uh, actually, uh, the ability of different languages already put in this Geopedia project, but <clears throat> it took uh, me very long to, uh, to understand that people all around the world they are not just they were uh, they are not just ready to go and participate in the project you need to to work on this you need to be a manager of the project you have to talk to people to come to uh, their meetings to uh, present your project to to make them to rise in interest in them so they could participate in the project and it it is a lot of time i tried to do this i got several letters the one from bolivia it was mostly productive and it took, we had several letters to each other and then i understood that it's just too too many tasks for me i left it so for now uh, there is an English section and there is a Russian section. Russian, of course, is most popular and we have a pretty good team on the Russian section, which uh, work every day on the content, which uh, improve content, which uh, enlarge and content and make hyperlinks and do all the things that uh, we would like to do that other people could use our website as a not just as a library as it is, but as a quote uh, collection, as a tool to uh, research, because there are some uh, abilities that uh, provide some tools. You like, we have text of Secret Doctrine of, of all the HPB works. And in those works, there are a lot of terms, a lot of names, a lot of books mentioned. So every mentioned person now provided with a pop-up message who is he when he was working and what is his achievements uh, some people actually uh, do some work at english section and uh, we communicate with uh, different societies all around the world so we got some permissions to publish uh, hpb works uh, uh, from other sites for example uh, Blavatsky Collected Writings by Boris Serkov. Uh, we have just finished it August, or maybe in, in July, uh, finished to publish it in Geopedia with permission. Oh, and uh, we are now providing hyperlinks to the different languages, to the different uh, locations in the internet where, we, where you can find these texts of HPB. Uh, X, uh, more than that, as uh, Svetoslav mentioned, Tim Boyd gave us a permission to publish uh, scrapbooks, HPB scrapbooks from Adyar archives. So that's uh, a, a very huge project of us. We provide not just a copy, not just an image of this page from HPB scrapbook. We also find a source of this newspaper or magazine that HPB used and put is as additional resource because some pages are, di are damaged and you barely can read what was uh, what was uh, in this page and we find this from other sources because actually there are several newspapers she used most of mostly and they are all scanned and available in the internet so we uh, find it put this page uh, on the as a, an additional source of the 
HPB scrapbook and get text from this additional source and put it online. So uh, the researcher can screen, can uh, look through all the texts, can search as a text search through all the scrapbooks uh, HPB left us and find some interesting information that he or she is looking for. And as an additional tool or instrument, as I mentioned, we provide some instruments. We uh, have this, well, besides uh, cyber links, which of course we provide, we put some editor's description and we put uh, a tool that makes a list, a list of all authors that HPB used, a list of all newspapers they, which she used, a list of missed pages, a list of uh, pages in Russian, a list of pages in Greek, and so on on other languages. The mostly, mostly she used, of course, the English text, but uh, uh, some text on different languages. So we communicate with uh, theosophists from different countries to get, for example, uh, translated Greek pages to translate it from Indian languages, Marathi uh, language mostly, and from French, from Arabian. So she used different languages, actually. She put uh, these um, cuts, newspaper cuts from different newspapers, from Russian, of course, but Russian we can provide. But other languages, we have to look for other participants. To translate for us well that's a great project we wish you all the success i think we can uh, publish the link to tiapedia under the under the video in youtube when okay. it's um released um, tell me can theosophy save the world and if yes how i think uh, it's in progress the short answer yes and that's what we do we are saving the world. Uh, and I'm pretty sure about this answer because I understand theosophy as a global thing. It's not just a, a, a property of a group of people. I understand theosophy as a wide teaching that even embraces the people who do not recognize themselves as a theosophist. Because theosophy is a uh, God's wisdom or divine wisdom, it's uh, it cannot uh, exclude anybody from it. Everybody is included. So theosophy as an, an as an action is a this surviving process and this uh, salvation process. By understanding theosophy, we understand that we are the one, that we are actually not separated so much. This is what theosophy is about for me. So theosophy is saving the, the world, it, but it's saving the world, the world in different, under the different names. It not just theosophy. Theosophy is just one of the name of this ancient wisdom or universal wisdom. It's a Greek word. But uh, there are different nations which do not use Greek and they use their own language, their own terms, and it's still theosophy. For me, it's like this. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Theosophical Insights. Pavel's experiences of how he studied theosophy before the TS in Russia even started is insightful. We're also amazed by how he created Theopedia. Look forward to part two. We're available on all podcast streaming platforms as well as on YouTube. Like and subscribe to our podcast for more episodes. Also, you can visit the website of the WFYT, the World Federation of Young Theosophists, to find out more about the podcast and other projects we're doing. Till next time.